Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Wyatt Humphreys, and today we're talking about the highly frustrating but wonderful world of FPV racing. The drone I'll be using for today's video is the iFlight Mach R5, aka the Zombie Shark. I got this thing about a month ago because, um, unfortunately, I have the need. The need for speed. And honestly, despite my need for speed, this goes a little overboard. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this is a clip of me and my QAVS. I just made a video about it, link in the description. Flying around the park at a reasonable speed. Now this, is the racing drone. And that's half throttle. Now you may be hearing zombie shark. Zombie shark. You're confused. It doesn't make any sense. Why is there a blue light coming from that side of my room? See, this is no ordinary drone. This drone has come back from the other side. This drone has done something that not many have. Swim. And live to tell the story. As you can see from the footage, I was devastated. But the next day I was ripping around again like nothing ever happened. So today's video is less of a review and more of a trial by fire. Because today we're going to do two things that I don't think enough channels do. One, I'm bringing out the radar gun and we're going to clock the actual speed of this thing. And two, we're going to put it through its paces at a custom track that I made in an abandoned park. In this video I want to spend less time talking and more time flying. So let's get out there. Before we go, I have something I need to take care of. Check that out! Alright, so we've arrived to the park. I'm here with my roommate, Tomer. He's the reason I can even make these videos because he lets me use all his stuff. So, a big round of applause for the roommate! Woo! So, he has the radar gun. Show him the radar gun. What are we looking at? We're gonna use this thing to get some real numbers, some real figures. It's not a lot of people on YouTube do it. I don't know why, but I think somebody has to. The first drone on the chopping block is the Cinelog 35 from Gep RC. This is a more Cinewoop style, but I'm gonna be flying it at around freestyle speeds. 60 miles an hour. Yep. I didn't get it. My bad. I have one job. 66. Nice. That was so much faster than I thought that thing could go. Unfortunately, a day before filming this, I broke the bar well. Psych, fixed it. Here's a speed test. Take two of the radar gun drone thing. 78. Nice. Good job, Bardwell DIY. Unless this isn't the Bardwell DIY, then good job, other drone. Let her rip, tater chip. Woo! <laughs> One more time. 96. Now we're doing the track. On my very first go around with the racing drone, I uh, broke this motor. So the next few laps are gonna be with this Cinelog and I'm still gonna do the same modes thing. I'm just gonna be going a little slower. So I was wondering why my range is so bad and I went to check it out. It looks like I decapitated my antenna. New problem. 
It's not my day. Lesson number one in racing. It's much safer in a sim. <laughs> all right, so I broke the tower, broke the drone. I guess I'll see you when it's all fixed and we can try to get this lap. <laughs> So the main thing I want to talk about in regards to racing is the three flying modes that I think every person experiences when they start to try and race. The first of these modes is when you're just learning the course. So essentially you just go slowly, make sure you go through all the gates, and you try to keep in mind all the blind spots, weird corners, and any unique qualities of the track. The second mode, which is arguably the most important for cinematic and freestyle flying, is when you go at an optimized pace. So you can see in this clip, I'm not going balls to the walls as crazy as possible, but I am trying to fly and take risks in a way that pushes it, but doesn't necessarily result in a crash. I had a coach back in the day, and he used to say slow is smooth and smooth is fast, and I don't think that could be truer for FPV racing. Because honestly, even if you got a slow time, at least you finished the race. The reason I think this mode is so important, especially for cinematic flying, is the fact that you start to focus more on the efficiency of your route and less on the gates themselves. So that if you're filming something cinematic, you can focus more on the angle and less on the gap you're going through. That's a huge benefit of learning how to race and one I don't think enough pilots tap into. All right, pause. I don't know if you've noticed, but my dives in mode two are a little sketchy. I think that has to do with the fact that the throttle on this drone is so punchy. In fact, one day while practicing dive, I throttled so hard that I accidentally went right back up through the gap. So I did what any normal person would do when I searched tutorials, and of course, Phantom FPV, who many of you probably already know, he made this awesome tutorial on how to smoothly recover from dives that helped a lot, that I think you should all check out at the link in my bio. My dive problem just comes down to the fact that I'm not throttling soon enough. Something that helped me process the information in that video is a technique in first-person shooter video games called pre-firing. Now, some of you may be familiar with this, but when you know an enemy is around a corner, you fire before you even peek. This takes reaction time out of the equation, which is why it's such a good technique to apply to dives. Because when you come out of that dive, you have to take in a lot of information and apply that to how you're going to recover. So long story short, pre-fire the throttle on your dives, and I think you guys will see that it's a lot easier to smoothly pull out of them. All right, back to the racing. And lastly, we have the third mode, which is trying to win. Now, I'm not really going to try this at the track today because honestly, I've broken enough stuff and I need to finish this video, but I will show some liftoff clips here while I'm talking. This mode honestly makes me a little motion sick, but I have to say it's like immersion therapy for FPV. Once you get used to going at insane speeds, everything else just feels like a walk in the park. So don't get me wrong. This mode has a lot of value. It's just doing it with your real quad. You might want to get some sponsors first. All of this has been to say, even if you don't like racing, it has its purposes. And if I were to make a sports analogy, it's kind of like cardio. No one wants to do it, but once you get good at it, you're kind of unstoppable. In the next video, I'll be showing the line that made this drone go into the water and I'll be trying it again. So stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, hit that button, drop a like for the algorithm, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.